with Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore out in theaters. It's time for a tier list of all 11 Wizarding World films. So let's get started. How's it go, movie watchers? Thank you guys for stopping by my channel. We are on tiermaker.com once again, and I'll be giving you guys my tier list for all 11 of the Wizarding World films, including the Harry Potter films and the three Fantastic Beast movies. Every part of me wants to just take every single Harry Potter film and shoot it right up to the S. Because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I love the books, I love the movies, I can watch any single one of them, and I just absolutely adore it. I have not felt that way for the Fantastic Beast films. So I'm going to try to be completely honest with my reviews and where I'm going to rank them and try not to put every single one in the S because it's going to be that hard for me. I don't want to put every single one in the S. I want to put some in the A tier and uh, we'll see how the other uh, Fantastic Beasts films go. So I'm going to go from order of uh, the Harry Potter films. They look like they're in order. And then I'll do the uh, Fantastic Beasts in order as well. Leave your tier list down below. What is your favorite one and what is your least favorite one as well? So we're going to start with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I absolutely love the uh the magic of that first film the score the acting how long it is it's faithful adaptation to the book everything about uh hogwarts and they take time to explore hogwarts and explore the professors and the structure of their classes and everything i absolutely love it I'm going to go ahead and put it in the S tier. It is one of my favorite Harry Potter films. I absolutely love some of the uh, the earlier Harry Potter films before. They really started to dive deep into uh, Voldemort and Sirius Black and when it got a little bit darker in that third film. But I love that kind of innocence to that first film and Harry Potter just discovering the wizarding world and his face and just him so happy about it and it's just the best part of the film so uh in the s tier there that's the first film uh next we got uh chamber of secrets this is uh the second film and once again it's uh really fun and i love that uh, mystery of the chamber of secrets in the basilisk i think it adds a much darker level to that first film and having tom riddle and there as well and exploring the mudbloods and all of that and a uh, little more lore in the wizarding world i love it um like i said i enjoy watching these two uh, earlier films um i'm gonna put the up here in the s tier and i know a lot of people really don't care about chamber of the secrets but I think the chamber itself is very mysterious and I love when they discover it. Gilderoy Lockhart is a fun character in here. I just love everything about Chamber of Secrets and I'm already putting most of them in the S tier. Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm just gonna put that straight up there into the S tier as well. The tone change from two to three is absolutely crazy. Going from Chris Columbus as director to Alfonso Cuaron as a director. Uh, really brought forth that dark change that needed for this third book with Sirius Black and Peter Pettigrew and the Dementors. He really captured how dark this story was going to be. And Sirius Black is absolutely terrifying in here without you even seeing him till the end of the film. And it's uh, not, it's a spoiler, but it's been out for some time that Sirius Black wasn't a bad person, but you really felt that. And with him just seeing in the posters and him laughing and being looking all crazy, it just added that 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 suspense to this film. And the mentors are terrifying. Professor Lupin is absolutely great in here. One of my favorite professors, but that tone change was absolutely needed for the third film. And Quran absolutely captured that. And then you started to see them uh, kind of act more like teenagers since they're supposed to be 13 in this book. I just love the uh, this film, the third film. Next up is Goblet of Fire. I'm gonna put Goblet of Fire in the A tier. It's a great film. I think they uh, rushed a little bit of the, the tournament, especially in the last uh, part with the maze. Uh, it's different from the book, um, but moments like that feel a little bit cut short and a little bit rushed. 
Um, but overall, this film has a fun adventure fill with Mad Eye Moody in here as the new professor. He's kind of creepy, uh, but we still explore Hogwarts. And Harry's still amazed at magic. That's what I love about Harry Potter as a character is that he spent like 11 years in a muggle world and he's going to live in a magical school and he's still amazed at everything. The challenges are a lot of fun with the dragons and the underwater sequences in the lake. Just certain moments feel a little bit rushed compared to uh, the overall film, but I do think that it is a great movie. Coming up next is, uh, this is Order of the Phoenix. This is the fifth film. I'm going to put that in the great section. I like all Harry Potter films. It's that simple. Um, Order of the Phoenix is one of my least favorite Harry Potter films, and I still will say that it is a great film. This is when uh, David Yates took over as director, and he directed literally every single other film on this list now. Uh, but he has a unique style of filmmaking. It's kind of got that smoky feel to it, and the action's really great with the Death Eaters, with Voldemort, and we see him kind of rise to power in here. But the way they brought Dolores Umbridge to the screen, man, you absolutely hate that character, but that is written in the best way possible. That's, there's some great writing for this character. To translate it nicely into the movie, every single scene, you absolutely hate her. But uh, it's a great film because Harry is getting to know his other peers since he's created Dumbledore's army. We get to know Neville a lot, Luna Lovegood, and we see uh, kind of more uh, relationships involved as well with Cho Chang and Ginny Weasley. Other supporting characters are having a chance to grow within this film. And we have more of Sirius Black and more of the supporting characters outside of Hogwarts. They get a chance to really grow as characters. So it's not focused solely on Harry Potter in this movie. It's really focused on Dumbledore's army and the original Order of the Phoenix. And I love that in here. And the action's great. There's some emotional moments for the story in here that works, especially with Sirius Black. The book is very long and it takes out a lot from the book to the movie. Could have put a little more into the movie, but overall it's a great film. Just uh, not my favorite Harry Potter movie. Next up we got uh, Half-Blood Prince. That's a great film. It looks visually different from the fifth film and the sixth film. Uh, I think this also one cut out so much from the book, especially with uh, Tom Riddle's past. Those are moments that I would have loved to see. Really flesh out Voldemort as a character. Add a whole new level to him. I think would have been absolutely great. But uh, for what it did offer, I really liked it. Uh, Slughorn was a great addition to the cast. And we are seeing Harry, Ron, and Hermione learn about the Horcruxes. And that is what carries into the seventh film. And they do a great job at kind of exploring that. And just really teasing it um the visuals in here are very smoky and i like that in here um it's something completely different from the fifth one and the seventh and eighth film as well i like as they're starting to grow up and we learn about the half-blood prince which is snape but honestly i never felt like that was a strong part of the book and the movie as well it's just an odd title out of all of seven books i felt like half-blood prince was the uh the weirdest title but for the movie i really liked it i liked uh learning about the horcruxes and tom riddle's past and seeing uh that conflict between dumbledore and tom riddle and then seeing malfoy uh, kind of grow as a character as well and him being challenged with uh, trying to kill Dumbledore those have some really strong emotional moments as well so it's and lands in the A tier right here next up the seven this is a great film as well um, this is the one I've watched the least out of every single Harry Potter film that is the one I've watched the least um, it's kind of slow at times in between sequences they are on the run in the book, it kind of works out, but for the movie, since they split it into two, it is it does move a little bit slow. Um, but I really like learning about the Deathly Hollows, the Wands, uh, the the more of the Horcruxes, exploring all of that. 
there is some strong emotion moments at the end. Uh, there's some funny moments. There's some sweet moments between Ron and uh, Hermione and Harry and seeing how everybody's kind of uh, accepting the fact that Voldemort has returned and they are not at school. How are they dealing with that? It's really challenging them as characters. And this seventh film, part one, did a great job of really challenging them. Even if moments did feel slow, they needed to feel slow to kind of grow them and challenge them as well. It's not the most exciting Harry Potter film since it took some of the slower parts from the book and made it into one film, but it does a great job leading into that seventh film. Uh, part two. Now, part two, this is a an amazing film. Um, it's action-packed. It's emotional as can be. Uh, it starts off really exhilarating and never really lets go from there and it's everything we'd want from um, the last Harry Potter film and uh, the way that they wrapped it up very very great uh, with Harry Ron and Hermione 19 years later it works um, it's just a really great film uh, with Snape those sequences about him and his past that's what they should have done with Voldemort because it completely changed the character and how you looked at him. And in the book, it's amazing. But in the movies, they uh, handled it so well to where just with that one sequence, it made you completely change your, it made, it changed your mind completely about um, Professor Snape. So if they would have had some sequences like that for Voldemort, I'm not saying that you would completely change your mind, but it would add a whole new level to this character. But I love this end film and uh, how they wrapped it up. It was emotional, it was action-packed, and Neville Longbottom had a chance to shine, and that was amazing. Uh, so next we got the um, Fantastic Beast movies here, the three films. Fantastic Beast, Where to Find Them, Crimes of, Gr Crimes of, Crimes of Grindelwald, and Secrets of Dumbledore. So I read the first Fantastic Beast movie. This one's okay. Uh, it's not bad, it's just boring. Uh, I think the story of Credence moves so slow. Uh, Eddie Redmayne as Newt is fun, um, but there's not a lot in here to make it exciting. Um, it's just a boring film. That's how I view this first film, is that it's truly forgettable. Uh, I watched it a few times, and every single time it feels like a chore to get through. Um, I really think that they should have kept it as a movie where he's just trying to find these beasts and research them and just have it like that, not have it connect to the Harry Potter films. This one really didn't have too much connection um, besides um, a few things here and there, but when we introduce to the second and third film, that's when it starts to grow more into the Harry Potter uh, universe. But Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Visually, it's a great looking film. David Yates brings that style nicely to the film, but it's just boring. Newt and uh, Queenie and Jacob and Tina, they're not the most exciting characters ever. And it really does show in here. Um, but there are some fun moments with the beast and the end is great when they are kind of um, putting the city back together. That's cool. But other than that, it's a pretty boring film. Uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, that is another film that's just, it's okay. Uh, when I say it's okay, listen, it's okay. Like, it's almost kind of like it could be here in the bad, but it's okay. Um, this one's lazy. I, I, I like the introduction of Jude Law in here. I think that works. Um, some of the moments with Hogwarts is awesome. The moments with Johnny Depp as Grindelwald, it's terrifying. He looks terrifying, but uh, doesn't have that presence in the movie. It's just a film uh, that I feel like it's one and done with um, certain storylines. The whole movie was just about finding Credence and discovering his powers and who he is. And when you learn that he's not the person that they're looking for, he's with his connection with the Lestrange family and he's actually a Dumbledore, it makes most of that second film pretty pointless, except for moments with Grindelwald and his connection with Dumbledore, but everything else just feels lazy and pointless when you kind of wrap up that film and lead into the third film, um, since uh, you think that he is someone else, but actually he is a Dumbledore, not the person that they were thinking and trying to hunt down. He's someone else, and it just makes the whole film just pointless as can be. 
Um, visually, it's great. There's some fun action scenes. I like Johnny Depp, but overall, it's just a lazy, boring film. And the last film, Dumbledore, Secrets of Dumbledore. It's a good film. It's not a great film. What happened here? Come on. It's not a great film. Uh, it's good. It's a, an improvement over the last two Fantastic Beasts. I like the more personal moments for uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Mads Milkison is great in here. He actually is terrifying. Uh, there is some fun moments with the Beast, with Eddie Redmayne and his brother. Those are some fun moments. And uh, uh, it feels urgent uh, since Dumbledore can't uh, attack Grindelwald because of this blood pack. So he uh, puts... Um, uh, Newt and his brother and Jacob and Professor Hicks to up to the task and I like them I feel like it's a great uh, mission kind of movie as they're trying to take down Grindelwald but it feels urgent it feels personal it adds more to that story of Grindelwald and Dumbledore uh, that more personal story between the two that we learned about in Deathly Hollows story but now we get a lot more of that in here and I think it does work and adds that level of uh, personal moments to Grindelwald and Dumbledore that we needed to flesh out these characters. Uh, there's some great action scenes, but Credence's story really feels thin. It's really not there. He's just in the background for most of the film. Grindelwald tells him to do something. He does it. He's emotional. He wants to be home. He wants to learn who he really is. And if they get rid of Ezra Miller in the Wizarding World, I would be completely fine with that because uh, his story feels wrapped up and uh, really feels like there's no need for him in the fourth film. Um, but it's a good film. It's more of an improvement over the previous two films. All right, so we got them all on the tier list here. Now we're going to rank these. Um, I have always had a clear vision of how I've ranked these, vi uh, these movies here. This is perfect right here. Grindelwald, Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore. That's fine right there. And then we're going to go Order of the Phoenix. Then we'll go... Deathly Hollow 7, uh, part one. This is part one, or this is part two. This one is actually part one, and this is part two. I gotta change those, so there we go. Harry Potter 5, 7, part one. Then we'll go four, and then six, and then two, then one, then seven, part two, and then three. I've always had that clear vision, and I, I just got the posters mixed up for uh, these uh, two seven films. There we go. So there's my ranking of the films. The worst one being Crimes of Grindelwald, and the best one being Harry Potter, Prisoners of Azkaban. I absolutely love it. So here's my Harry Potter uh, ranking. Like I said, I think they're great and amazing. I absolutely love them. And here's the um, Fantastic Beast films. I just said in my review, I don't think there will be a Fantastic Beast film that would be like in the middle of a Harry Potter ranking. I don't think there will ever be a Fantastic Beast film that will be as good as Order of the Phoenix. I don't know. I could be proved wrong down the road, but right now, I don't think so. So there is my ranking video of the 11 Wizarding World films. Leave your ranking down below. How would you rank all 11 of these films? Let me know in the comment section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming tier list videos like this. My name is Just Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.